Greetings and welcome. We are in uh, Senior English and we are working now again with uh, Craig Conrad's unstoppable volume. I'm with you at chapter number five, which he will call Fill Your Cup. I hope that you're also looking at your unstoppable journal for just a second. The focus here will be the idea of personal responsibility and personal abilities in relationship to how it relates to responsibility, all right? So we'll, we'll be looking at that. This fill your cup thing, what is that about? Good question. I'm glad you asked it. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at what Mr. Conrad has to say about this one. I am a teacher. I'm reading now with you, page 12. I am a teacher. My job is to teach the students. However, when I'm really lucky, I have students who teach me. One of those students was Donnie McLeslie. Donnie taught me the world's biggest lie. All men are created equal. First of all, we're not all men, are we? Second, we're not all equal. Each one of us is unique and different. Fortunately, we live in a country that strives to provide the equal right to be unequal by choice. Even identical twins I taught through the years were different, at least on the inside. What I learned from Dr. Dennis Whaley and witnessed from Donnie is we all have a cup. We're speaking now, obviously, in word picture, in metaphor here, right? We're not talking about a cup that is literal. We all have a cup. Your cup is your genetic makeup. It's all those things about yourself you can't change. Your sex, your height, your skin color. You can't change those. And then his joke, unless, of course, you're Michael Jackson. You got what you got. Some of you are blessed and have huge cups. You're intelligent, strong, fast, good-looking. Others of us, like Donnie, well, let's just say our cups are not as big. The good news is, as I was taught to me by Donnie, it's not the size of your cup that's important, it's how you fill it. I think it's safe to say that in many ways Donnie didn't even have a cup. He had more like a saucer. When he was a small child, a doctor misdiagnosed Donnie as severely mentally retarded. When he got to high school, they put him in my class, woodworking. One day my phone rang and I was told Donnie would be enrolled in my class. Because I knew who he was, I questioned, why would you put a kid like that in a woodworking class considering the risk for injury? It's a legitimate question, right? Then I was told, Donnie can't read, so if there's anything of importance he needs to know, you need to read it to him. As I hung up the phone, I resented the fact that they would put a kid like that in my woodworking class. How stupid is that? I remember thinking. Now I know that I was the stupid one. In a normal situation, the teacher teaches the student. I would soon learn that Donnie was about to become my teacher. Over the next few days and weeks, I read Donnie our safety texts, af tests after school. I got to really liking him because of his warm, friendly personality. Then, over the next few months, I started to learn from him. He was a kid who didn't have half the size cup as the other kids in his class, but he filled it every day. Many times, Donnie would sand a piece of wood until it literally shined. He would often leave class covered in sawdust, laughing to himself as he left. He'd wave at me and say, see you tomorrow. Donnie finished all the required projects that year and made a spice rack for his mom as a final project. That spice rack never would have won a blue ribbon at an annual woodworking show. The drawers didn't open smoothly. It was a little out of square, but that didn't matter. Donnie put a lot of love, time, hard work into that spice rack, surprising his mom with it when he finished. She thought it was the best spice rack she'd ever seen. Best in the world, Donnie told me. I couldn't help wondering if Donnie's classmates were blind. Did they not see what just occurred here? Here was a kid with half the size cup they had finishing his project. Some of them, the big cups, didn't even get their projects completed. They failed the class. They should have been embarrassed to have worked alongside Donnie, who filled his cup every day in every way. Donnie was also a wrestler, but his cup wasn't big enough to be on varsity. So even in his senior year, Donnie was on junior varsity. One day, he invited me to come to his one and only home match. I told him, you bet, buddy, I'll be there for you. I arrived early and waited through all the other matches until the junior varsity heavyweight match. Donnie ran out onto the mat, stripped off his sweatsuit, and began warming up. This was going to be his one and only moment to shine. Donnie didn't have a clue what was about to occur. The other team didn't have a junior varsity heavyweight, so there was poor old Donnie, all dressed up, and no place to go. 
He shrugged his shoulders at me with his head hung low as he walked off the mat. I shrugged my shoulders at him as if to say, sorry, Donnie, but that, there, there's nothing you can do about it. I leaned to my wife and whispered, gee, I, I wish there was something I could do. Many people say everything happens for a reason, but I never really gave it much thought until I was about to witness it for myself later that night. Perhaps those people are right. Maybe everything does happen for a reason. I don't remember why I stayed to watch the varsity matches. I only went to see Donnie that night, and there were plenty of other things I needed to be doing. Whatever the reason, I stayed, thank God. I did. Had I left, I would have missed the greatest moment that ever took place in our gymnasium during my 26 years of teaching. When the time came for the varsity heavyweight match, our guy was disqualified. The coach decided to substitute Donnie. It was only an exhibition match since we had already forfeited the match due to the disqualification. Everyone could see the contest was a mismatch. The other guy's cup was huge. He was bigger, stronger. He had a lot more moves than one move Donnie. Wrestle. It became quickly evident just how big the other guy's cup was. He was scoring points at will, taking Donnie down each time. But every time Donnie went down, he got back up and did his one and only move. Late in the final period, it was obvious this was a huge mistake. Donnie hadn't scored a point, and he was getting annihilated. But this was an exhibition match, so they let it go. I turned to my wife with 13 seconds to go and said, this is the worst thing that could have happened to Donnie. He could have been better off if he hadn't wrestled tonight. And that's when it happened. I don't know why, but I think Mr. Big Cup looked up at the scoreboard and decided to stop filling his cup. With 13 seconds to go, Donnie got this, his one and only move around the guy's neck. Our gymnasium erupted with cheers. With eight seconds to go, Donnie took him down on the mat, and as if on cue, everyone in the gym stood on their feet. With four seconds left in the match, Donnie pinned him. Donnie won. Tears streamed down both my cheeks that, cheeks that night as I got to witness firsthand, it's not the size of your cup that matters. It's how you fill it. I'll tell you something else. Two cups runneth over that night, Donnie's and mine. I jumped from the bleachers and ran down to the mat to congratulate Donnie and say thank you. But that, as they say, is the best part of the story. Let's point out, as we finish this chapter, that the real challenge is to work with the talent that you have. For many years, long ago, I was a coach, and I often would say that I will take a player with half the talent and double the heart any time over an athlete of tremendous gifts who doesn't have the drive, doesn't have the desire. Each of us has our own cup. Each of us has our own talent. Each of us has our own genetic ability. The challenge is to use what we got. All right, guys, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that chapter of the Unstoppable book.